Today, my friends, we're going to do something totally stupid. We are going to battle Skeletron. That is right. In terms of progression, technically, we'd be skipping the Brain of Cthulhu and indeed Queen Bee. Now, you may be wondering, well, Python, why the devil are you going to be going for Skeletron now? Well, A, believe it or not, I'm pretty sure we will be able to with the gear that we have, especially with all of our lovely movement accessories. And secondly, I actually really want the alchemy station so I can officially finish my greenhouse and therefore allow myself access to loads and loads of buff potions. So yeah, that's why we're doing Skeletron today. But don't worry, we're not actually going to skip the other bosses. We will come back to them, so please don't worry. It may seem like I'm rushing things along here, but believe me when I say, I'm really not. That really isn't the intention here. I just want to get the alchemy station. It's as simple as that. You know what? We just went ahead and checked out what fishing quest we have, and it turns out that it's going to be one that we can get from the oasis over here, right? So all we gotta do is see if we can get, what was it, the scarab fish, I think it was called? Oh, second time rolling. I will absolutely take it. All right, so that marks the fifth fishing quest to be done here. What are we gonna get? We got ourselves a fuzzy carrot and a compass rose. Oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, that could go in here. So yeah, welcome back to the Let's Play, my friends. I really do hope you guys are having a fantastic day. And of course, I want to start off by saying an enormous thank you for all of your insane support throughout this series. Now, of course, if you're excited for today's episode and you want to continue supporting this series here, then please do be sure to head down beneath the video and spend a second to drop a like. Hit the subscribe button if you're new around here and you don't want to miss out on my future content. And if you really want to go on further with your support, you can check out my range of Apex gaming PCs over at pythogb.com slash PC. Or if you're more in the market for some Terraria merch, head on over to terraria.shop and use code Python for a whopping 15% off. Now then, the good news is we have access to the right hand side of the world pretty easily. And actually, as a result, the dungeon isn't that far away. So by extension, we have easy access to the dungeon as well. So that's actually pretty darn handy dandy. The other good news is it is a pretty... Approaching night time. We've got semi-decent weaponry. I mean, the mini shark alone should be enough to take down Skeletron. Can I or can I not break these bricks? I can break these bricks. Okay, pretty cool. That will allow me to smooth this structure out a little bit. And as a result, I won't get caught on it mid-battle. Uh-oh. Looks like the old man's... Oh, the old man doesn't take damage from hostile mobs. That's interesting, considering that he is still in sort of a panicked state rushing around the place there. That seems a bit weird, no? Although I guess it does make sense that that guy doesn't take damage because otherwise, yeah, he'd probably be quite dead many times over, in fact. And that would certainly put a spanner in the works for us right now when we're trying to, you know, go for the goal of Skeletron. So, um, yeah. <laughs> How about this for buffing up to the max, eh? Folks, we've even got sunflowers here, so we can increase our movement speed. Yeah. All right, the only other thing I think I need to do is just add in perhaps another layer of platforms, and then I think we're going to be ready to try this thing. All right, light this sucker up, and then get on with the battle, I guess. So here we are, just a couple more torches, and we're just about ready. Do I have any buffs on me? No. We're doing this completely bufflessly. Uh-huh. All right, well, uh, yeah, this is certainly going to be an interesting one, but at the end of the day, we have quadruple jump. We have the lightning boots. We have the magic luminescence, all of which should do the job quite nicely. But of course, we can't take that as like a guaranteed victory, can we? We've still got to be relatively careful. We only have, what, 35 defense? I mean, the Bast statue is definitely helping us in terms of increasing our defense. We would have only had, what, 30 otherwise? I mean, that's still a decent amount, but still, all defense is good defense and all that. So all we have to do is we have to prioritize the hands. I just hope that I can take down the hands 
relatively quick. Like, only, you know, we don't have all the time in the world. We do have a bit of a sort of loose time limit here, don't we? So, we've got to ensure our accuracy is at least semi-alright. It's probably worth mentioning there are weapons that you can use which will still do maximized damage to the head, even though the hands aren't taken out. For example, the Molten Fury. That is a weapon you can use, and it would still do maximum damage to the head. It's strange that that is the case, but equally, it's kind of awesome. <laughs> All right, so here's what I'm thinking, my friends. If we actually do manage to do this first time, Roland, then you guys have to drop a like, okay? If we can get something like a thousand likes for us taking down Skeletron this early on in progression, technically skipping over two bosses, not just one, but two... Yeah, that would be really amazing, eh, folks? All right, the good news is one of the hands is almost dead. Uh, come on now. There we go. Just one more hand to go, my friends. Come on now. Take that hand down, you son of a gun, and then we're going to be doing maximized damage to the head. I don't know that the defense of the head reduces to zero, but he will certainly have less defense with him not having hands. Come on, any minute now. And there we go. Right, damage. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, now we are doing damage, my friends. This should be easy street. So long as we are doing a good job of avoiding all of those skulls, because let's be honest, they're actually kind of nasty. They do a lot of damage to you. So long as we avoid them, we're pretty much good to go. It's always the spinny phase. That's when we're going to be doing the most amount of damage. All right, we're about a quarter down here, folks, which isn't bad. This is definitely an endurance fight, isn't it? <laughs> I guess that's the only thing we've uh, taken down bosses with relatively underpowered weapons. Although I say that, the mini shark has always been like one of the all-time greats in this game, hasn't it? Even today in Terraria 1.4.4. It is a gnarly weapon, isn't it? Like, truly it is. You know what? Honestly, I'm not even breaking a sweat here, folks. I don't know if it's just because I've now done so many Let's Plays in Terraria Master Mode that it legitimately feels like normal mode to me. I don't know if it's just that, or maybe I've just, you know, gotten better at the game over the years. I don't know. That was a decent amount of damage taken, though. 57. All right, come on, then. Got about a third health remaining. And we have three and a half minutes remaining. I mean, to be honest, this should easily be done in time. We've just got to make sure we don't take too many hits, really. I mean, when it comes down to it, my friends, this is the whole point of this series. Yeah, technically, we're skipping over a couple of bosses. But, you know, we're taking down this boss with pre-Eater of Worlds, pre-Brain of Cthulhu gear. <laughs> That's absolutely nuts to me. Hey, eh? It's not bad, is it? No, like, really, it isn't. All right, 1,000 health. Ah, oh, dude, I can't believe we're actually about to do this. This is so incredibly easy. In fact, I might even argue that I could have taken him down with a different range of weapon that wasn't the mini shark. But there we are. We did it. Not only that, but we just got ourselves the master mode drop. We've got the bone glove and indeed the weapon. Do you know what? That's not bad RNG, is it? We've got ourselves the possessed school and the book of schools. Hey, that's not bad. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for us to complete our objective. All we're looking for is the alchemy station. And then pretty much we will come back to the dungeon to get the rest of the stuff later, okay? So all we're looking for is the alchemy station. And you know what? I might actually take the water candles as well because they're going to be useful for mob farming, of course. Underground, on the surface, in the jungle, in the crimson. Who knows? It's just going to be useful to have, isn't it? Oh, my goodness me. Okay, definitely got to be careful of that, eh? <laughs> The good news is I actually managed to pick up a golden key already. Should we just open the chest since we're here and since we have the key? I mean, why not, right? Let's just do it. What have we got here? The Aqua Scepter. That's not a bad little weapon right there, if you ask me. Oh, the mechanic. <laughs> All right. We now have access to teleporters. Ah, that is so cool that they made it so that teleporters are now purchased from the mechanic rather than from... It wasn't you used to sell it. It was the steampunker, right? You used to have to take down at least one mech boss in order to have the steampunker spawn in. But here we are. Pre-hard mode already with access to teleporters. That 
is pretty good going, if you ask me. <laughs> another water candle. Ow, jeez. And another water candle. Hey, and there is our objective's end. Not only a beautiful alchemy station, but also a bewitching table. <laughs> hey, not bad going, folks. So, yeah, there we are. We're done. We finally have ourselves the alchemy station. Some people might consider me to be an absolute crazy goofball, but here we are. This is all I wanted to get at the end of the day. I just wanted the alchemy station. It just so happened that that required me to take down Skeletron. So, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I, I, I just wanted the alchemy station. It's as simple as that. Us having the bewitching table, though, that is a huge bonus. I would absolutely be taking that and rolling with it. So, do you know what? We're actually going to put that down. And bada bing, bada boom. We can now upgrade our Abigail's flower. Wait, are you telling me we didn't even have the Abigail's flower on for the Skeletron fight? Uh-oh. <laughs> well, I dare say I'm going to get some abuse for that. But in other news, I still managed to take down Skeletron. I didn't even have maximized damage going for me. <laughs> oh, that is so crazy. Oh, no way. We've got James the Clothier. We've got Chippy in our world. Oh, no way. I'm so happy. Oh, dude, that is actually so boss. We've got the r slash Terraria Reddit painting here. Bruh. We've got to take this and we've got to put this down somewhere. Where exactly? I don't know. It's kind of annoying because most of our builds are using odd numbers. And obviously, this is, what, a 6 by 4 painting. So we're going to need a build that uses even numbers. And then we can place this thing in there. I guess for now, it can go in here. But uh, for any of you guys interested in what it looks like, yeah, we've got a bit of a red tinge right now, but that's what it looks like. We've got the default character there. We've got ourselves a demon eye and a little heart right there. That is so cool looking, isn't it? <laughs> oh my goodness me. Do you know what? Part of me really wants to go for the void bag. Ah, oh, that'd be so nice. That really would. But if I went for that today, I'm pretty sure I would get accused of rushing through the series. But, I mean, to have an additional inventory's worth of space and for us to be able to pick up stuff even if our main inventory is full. I mean, how could you not want to go for that, right? So then, I think the next thing I want to do is another fishing quest. It's the dynamite fish caught on the surface. Yet another super easy quest to to do. This would be quest number six. I can't remember if it's the 30th fishing quest or 50th fishing quest where you got the golden fisher rod, but it goes without saying, that's something I would very much like to go for. I mean, the golden fishing rod with the super high-end 50% bait. Oh, you basically become a fishing master at that point, don't you? <laughs> All right, what you got for me, buddy? Dynamite fish. Oh, that's a crate. That's kind of cool. Uh, oh, iron skin potions. That's very nice, actually. Hey! There we go, my friends. Didn't take long. And what are we going to get? We've got ourselves some more fishing potions and some more bait. <laughs> All right. Not too bad. Better still, because we got ourselves a few bits of bass, we can get ourselves some food here. Yeah. Ah, do you know what? I'm going to say sod it. At the end of the day, the point of this series is that we have fun doing the things that we want to do. We're not going to feel limited by anything. All right. So I'm going to go at the pace I want to go at. So we're going to head into this crimson. We're going to get ourselves some buffs placed down, and we are going to have ourselves a rocking good time down there. Once again, we will go with the whole buff their heck up out of everything, including putting down sunflowers and obviously some more heart lanterns. So, yeah. Go big or go home. Alrighty. So, when I surface from this crimson, I'm hoping that I would have taken down the mighty brain of Cthulhu. So, let's... Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's part of the dungeon structure here. Yo, that's kind of cool, actually. I like that. But anyways, we are going down here. We are absolutely a wrecking shop with the beautiful grass blade. We're going to set ourselves up a whole bunch of buff stations and platforms, of course. And then we're going to go out this thing. Full tilt. To be honest with you, I might have gone a little bit overboard in terms of the amount of buffs I've bought along. We don't really need to have two loads of all of our buffs. We just need to plant some grass here. 
get our sunflower in, get our bass statue in, the beautiful campfire, and of course the beautiful heart lantern as well. <laughs> Alright! I think we've got something pretty good going on here. Do you know what I am thinking though? We've got all of this space here, and we're placing down all of these torches. Add two and two together, and you get the torch god, right? So then, our well-fed buff is just about all we have, so we might as well chuck it on. What are we going to get? It's the panic necklace. That means, ladies and gentlemen, we can actually make for ourselves the band of star power. That is going to make things so... So much easier. It's actually kind of crazy. All right, here we go, my friends. We're going to go at it with the grass blade here, as recommended by a lot of you guys in the community here. And, well, I can see why already. Uh, my friends, this is absolutely a wrecking shop. What the hell? <laughs> oh, this is hilariously easy. All right, that guy's dead, and that guy's dead. All right, and now it's time for the actual brain himself. Hello there, buddy. 2700 health. That's what we need to take down. It's always when the doppelgangers start spawning in. That's when things start getting a bit interesting. But actually, when it comes down to it, since we're doing poison damage, as a result of all of the little one damage ticks, I can tell which of the brains is actually the real one. You just gotta look for the brain that ha oh god. Okay, wait, 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 wait. We're working with mirror images here. And it's always a little bit weird for me, but never mind. There we go. We done did it. <laughs> oh, we got a trophy out of it as well. Oh, dude, that is so boss. I mean, come on. If this episode doesn't deserve a like, I simply don't know what does. We've just absolutely been tanking the hell out of these bosses. It's actually kind of ridiculous. Now... What do you guys think, eh? Should we do this thing? If we give ourselves a nice large amount of space to maneuver in, in the middle, and then we pretty much just go absolutely ham with a bunch of torches, we should be able to get the Torch God event to start. Come on now. Come on. Any second now. Torch God. Here we go, my friends. Oh, snap. Right, it's all about avoidance now, my friends. Ah, jeez. Right, so long as we stay in the middle, I might actually have a little bit of reaction leeway time, should I say. Oh, dude. I can't believe it. This isn't even, like, technically a boss. It's like a mini boss, isn't it? And it's not even a boss in the way that you need to, like, take down a bunch of health or anything like that. You just gotta sort of, I don't know, avoid. It's as simple as that. Oh, God. All right, come on, Python. Keep on it, though. We can only take maybe one more hit. Maybe two at maximum. Ah! Uh, no! Oh, we failed! No! Ah, oh, come on. That freaking spider dude threw me off. Question is, just how long do you need to wait before the event starts up again? I have no idea. Maybe we could pop right back on over there and just... Give it another try. Maybe this time we can go down there with a few buffs. Yeah. All right. Our buff supply is looking pretty good. Regen, iron skin, swiftness, all that good stuff. The shine potion would actually be quite useful, I think. Thorns? I mean, you can't technically do damage against the torch god, so thorns is actually completely useless. In fact, most of these are. Like, we're not going to be doing any knockback to the torch god or anything like that. We just need buffs that will allow us to stay alive and take less damage. So actually, maybe an endurance potion. That'd be a pretty good way to go, eh? Oh, do you know what else might be a good idea? Uh, do we by any chance have the ability to make for ourselves... I think it's a platinum candle or something, and then you make it into a peace candle. There we are. So there's the platinum candle. I think all we need now is the pink gel. And that is how you then make it into peace candles. Ah, do you know what? No, the pink gel is used for the pink torches. And then you can make the peace candles, I do believe. Yep, there it is, in fact. Oh, we didn't need to make the platinum candle in the first place. Wow. Uh, it turns out I am pretty hazy on crafting recipes. All right, folks, making our way back down. The question is this. Is the Torch God event going to sort of immediately restart again? I don't... Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. Uh, buff it up straight away, in which case... Right. I am going to go silent so I can go concentration mode here. Because good grief do I need it. <laughs> yep. 
Yeah! Here we go. Come on. Torch God's favour. Where are you at? There you are, you absolute beauty. <laughs> Boom. All right. So now any torches we place will be automatically converted into their biomes variant. So there we are. Believe it or not, despite the fact we've done a bit of a boss rush today, all of it has been for building reasons. We've got the torch God's favour so we can build with the respective biome torch type. We took down the brain of Cthulhu so we can hopefully make for ourselves by the end of today's episode the void bag so we can hold more building stuffs. And obviously, we've got the alchemy station, another building thing that I wanted from the dungeon. So, yeah. Might seem like on the surface we just went for a bit of a boss extravaganza willy nilly, but believe me when I say it was calculated. Also, random side note, it's amazing what you can achieve when you actually concentrate, eh? <laughs> Check it out, we didn't even place the peace candle down. <laughs> Uh, what can I say? We're just that good, aren't we? So then, everybody, it's jungle spores, tissue samples, and, of course, bones. Those are the three things we need for the void bag. Unfortunately, we don't have enough bones just yet, though. So we're going to have to head back down into the dungeon real quick. Just do a tiny bit of mob grinding down there. Get ourselves some more bones. And then that is it. Ah, uh, no way. Water bolt. How could I pass that up, eh? Aha, here we go. The last few guys. There we are. Right, we don't need to go any further than that, my friends. You want to know something stupid? Me TPing back to base was actually completely unnecessary because look at this. We've actually got a crimson altar right here. And there it is, the almighty void bag. We finally got it, ladies and gentlemen. And on that successful and epic note, it is going to be time to wrap up the episode. But of course, we do have the comment of the day to do beforehand. For today, that comes from Kaysin, who says there's actually moss bricks. So you can take a paint scraper to that neon moss and make it into some super colorful bricks. And try throwing the moss into shimmer. Now, some of you guys were saying you could buy the paint scraper, and that is the way you grab the beautiful moss, and then from there, we could do some stuff with it. So I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and experiment with that real quick, just to finish off here. Ah, nice. I did notice there was a meteorite message before, and well, here it is, in fact, in the jungly jungle of epicness. All right, definitely something to dig up in a future episode. So here we go, paint scraper. We're about to come across the neon moss. Let's see what we can do here. Can we... Oh, there we go. I just picked some up. Ah, oh, nice. Can be placed, of course, and it's a material, of course. So, yeah, let's see if we can't grab ourselves a bunch of this. Oh, I didn't even realize this. You can use auto-place or auto-aim to get rid of all of the moss around here. Yeah! <laughs> all right! All right, so a furnace. Let's chuck that down. Okay, so no sign of anything new just yet. Maybe we need to make ourselves some bricks here. Maybe then we can do something. Right, instead of going back to the guide, I think I'm going to wiki this. Only I want to do everything here because then I could do the whole, you know, shimmer thing as well. Because otherwise I'd have to go back to base and then come all the way back here. That'd be a right faff. Wow, okay, turns out there's a lot of stuff you can do with this moss. You can put it upon grey bricks and stone blocks. You can also chuck the moss itself into shimmer. Shimmer. Let's do that and see what we get here. Ooh, helium moss. It's literally rainbow moss. And apparently the final thing you can do with it is, yes, make moss blocks. And the way you do that is with clay and moss together at a furnace. Oh, no way. Here it is. Wow. So we've got neon moss bricks. Okay, very cool. And then, of course, we've got the helium moss bricks. So let's start off with the neon moss bricks. Wow, they are very bright. Whoa. That's a cool looking block, isn't it? <laughs> wow. All right, let's just temporarily chop this tree down because I'd also like to check out the helium moss brick. Yeah. More rainbow type blocks in the game. <laughs> yeah, that is actually so cool looking, isn't it? I gotta say... 
This looks amazing, doesn't it? And there's like four other types of moss you can reportedly get as well. So yeah, I'm very, very excited to see if I can't find myself all of the other glowing moss types in this world. I'm hoping you can get more than one type of glowing moss in a world anyway. I mean, this is a large world as well, so it's got to be a good chance of there being multiple types, right? I hope so. But yeah, thank you so much for turning my attention to that, case. And I really, really appreciate it. You've just expanded my building repertoire one heck of a ton. So thank you so much for that. I'm very much looking forward to seeing if we can't make ourselves some epic builds of that in the future. But yeah, for now, my friends, it's time to wrap up today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys have enjoyed today's bumper boss ponage extravaganza of epicness, then please do be sure to drop a like beneath the video if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to ding that bell if you don't want to miss out on my future content. But for now, thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day, folks. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye!